Welcome everyone to this breakfast seminar on brand naming. And today we have two guests. We have Kasper Sperber, who is a copywriter. You just take a look there and say hi. Hello, <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> and we have Karin Nordborg, who is a trademark lawyer. Can you say hi to you? Hi, good morning. <laughs> and my name is Katarina Nilsson. I am the founder and uh, uh, owner of Aquarium. So Aquarium is a naming agency and we help companies to come up with new brand names that do the job for you and your business. So the idea here is to hopefully give you some new knowledge, some examples of um, what you can think of, success factors and some common pitfalls. And to make this more fun for me and for everyone, so I've invited these brilliant guys to also add some of their juice and knowledge and expertise when it comes to taglines, Casper. Yes. And also um, the, the legal side of yeah. things. So we will start off and I will start with a, a brief presentation about naming and you will jump in with the legal sides of things. And afterwards we will talk about taglines and what to think about when coming up with your tagline. Right. And if anyone has any questions, just jump in and ask your questions. Mm, okay. So that's pretty much what I like, that it's more of a conversation. But mm. still, we have prepared some bits and pieces for you. Okay, so to start with, these are some of the companies on the left-hand side that uh, are uh, clients. And also some of the names on the right-hand side that we have created for different companies. And one of the latest references is uh, Zenuity, which is a brand for auto self-driving cars mm -hmm. from Volvo cars. So that's pretty awesome to see that name out on the market now. And why on earth would you like to invest in brands and branding? Well, of course, we have all the chance to go out and be global nowadays. It's so much easier than a few generations back. So global is the new black and you need to to know how to how to play on that large arena as well and use every tool and every weapon in your toolbox to actually be seen there so branding is about visibility and to to stick out and to compete um, and also with brands you can build relationships and have people be loyal to you and it's so much easier when you have a good name and you have uh, nice logo type and you communicate well and you be all that you can be together with your your different uh, target audiences and in the end it's about selling more and and expanding your business so with a great name and a strong brand you actually help customers to make decisions and many times I've heard, okay, so this with branding and, and good names, it's only for consumer to consumer businesses where we talk to private people and we try to influence them to, to buy more. So is that true? No. <laughs> so in every business, even if you, your business um, target group is other businesses, there is someone taking and making decisions and making choices all the time. So when you have three different services or even products, and they are equally good you there is something that makes you actually make the decision so and that this is what we actually can influence to a great deal and brands also add to the value of your company and we talk about brand equity so do you have some comments here karin oh i think yeah we can wait for them yeah okay yeah, yeah cool yeah just to share a few trends right now what we see is that companies do have more of a helicopter view and try to take all their, their their whole portfolio and different products into consideration and create some coherent structure and names that make sense and can work together so to strengthen the brand strategy and the the, the business idea and the business strategy we also see that smaller companies go professional within naming and branding as well, as far as the wallet can allow you. Mm -hmm. And you need also to, to learn as much as you can and, and really work in every, with, and use every element of, uh, of the brand that you can, can use. 
to grow your brand and to stick out there and to be seen in the world. And B2B, they, that line of business is really waking up uh, more and more, realizing that, yes, we can't hide anymore. We need to, to work with these things. And I love to work with B&B companies also. So the, the results can get really great also when your competitors aren't so skilled. So. Mm. Still, what we also see is that names and the, say the quality of the names it is moving from more feature and technology-based names to more emotionally driven names. So you would really like to evoke something in your target audience. And with this, it also goes that another trend is to, to leave more descriptive names for more associative names. And this is also great for your business expansion since you can limit yourself with a descriptive name. And I'm sure Karin will comment yeah. on this as well a little bit later on. And what we see is that companies also desire to have and require to have support throughout the whole process. So when it comes to, to choosing and to deciding on your name in an organization, that is something that always brings up a lot of emotions and opinions, personal points of view that might not be very relevant in the end. So it is an advantage to have a structured process that you can follow and someone to actually, well, hold your hand uh, or kick your ass when needed as well, when it comes to making the, the decision in the end. So what are some of the risks with poor naming? Well, if you have a name that sounds like everyone else in your line of business, for example, no one will remember you. Um, that your name can limit your possibilities. I just um, uh, talked to, uh, to Eric before going in here that I work with a consultancy firm. They have a descriptive name that reflects just one of their four or five business areas. Uh, which meant that they lost money every day. Their clients didn't realize they could actually buy all these other four services from them. So in that case, I would say that that's when you need to, to, to really make this a change in your organization and change your, your name and your, your trademark. Hot today, cold tomorrow. So this is about being trendy and sometimes funny as well. So if you have a name that you would like to, to work for you in the long run, you need to, to choose something that you can live with. Uh, I will give you some examples of when companies have used the trend. Um, and of course, uh, when you don't work with naming in an appropriate way, you might run into the risks that your name actually means something very inappropriate in another language, or that it's impossible to pronounce in an important language for your business. Or it could also associate to something that you would not like it to associate to. So it could be like uh, the nickname of a right-wing politician or whatever. So it is pretty nice to, to make this assessment and know that information on beforehand to make the decision, okay, is this worth taking the risk or should we choose something else? Um, when you don't make your, your homework on beforehand, uh, there is a risk that you can infringe on other people's intellectual property rights. That is choosing a name that is too similar to someone else in the same line of business. And it is, this is what Karen works with every day, so she will tell you a little bit more. Yeah, I, I usually say that it's like uh, building a house in space that looks free. It doesn't matter how big and how fabulous your building is. If someone comes and hello, this space is mine, you have to surrender. You don't, I mean, you have to take your building down and you have to pay a lot of money as well. So you have to do your homework from the beginning. So the last bullet there is that you might not be able to, to own and control your own name if you don't choose it wisely. So would you like to comment on that, please? Yes. Um, I mean, um, a common mistake is that when you get a re registration, you think that you are free to use it how, um, as you choose, um, that you are 
um, that you have a positive right to use your name. That is not true. But uh, it's like standing in line. Yeah, you can mess with people behind you with that in front of you. So you have to first uh, look out for who is in line before you. The, the clearance checks that you have to do. You have a name, you do the clearance checks. And then, okay, you stand in line, you, you put yourself in, in the line, you, you uh, apply for a registration, and then hopefully you get your registration. And then you have your registration certificate. And you can use it on the, the people behind you, but not in front of you. But uh, if, you're not, if you don't have your registration, you cannot mess with anyone. Mm. Um, so registration is really, really important. Of course, you can get uh, um, it, through use. You can, you can, you can uh, have a right as well. But registration is really important. Cool. Thank you so much, Karin. If you have specific questions about these things, take your chance and ask yes. Karin. Fire away. <laughs> Okay, so these are a few examples of uh, language thingies. So, pajero in Spanish means wanker. It's a really, really crude word. So, when it comes to the market in Chile, uh, people say that no man would ever drive a Mitsubishi Pajero. And they actually chose to change the name on that market only to something else. I don't know what. Uh, and this is a, a recent name shift, actually. So this is a, the other uh, example here. Dong, Dong Energy, is uh, an, it's a Danish energy company, and they just recently changed their name to Ørsted, Ørsted uh, instead. And Dong, well, it's a, another name for penis in English, or dildo even. So this is so funny too mm. when you have this and also with, with the dong energy I love it. so it's so fun mm. too when you don't realize what happens when you go out there and you actually expand into a larger arena and there are so many examples mm. i'm sure you have seen many examples yes. as well and the car industry is notorious mm. for choosing mm. inappropriate names and it's very interesting to me to to see that you don't choose that very cheap investment of checking names linguistically before you actually go for them. Yeah, and compared to the legal checks, the linguistic checks are it's so nothing. cheap. So cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing. No, no it, exactly. It's really yeah. A tenth. Yeah. yeah. So that's also something to, 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 to remember to yeah. do the linguistic checks before you do the in-depth yeah. legal screening and not the other way around yeah. for money reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what about a healthy name, a good name? What is a good name? Well, it should sound, sound good and communicate well, or at least be neutral in, in your different markets. So if you have a neutral name, you can always build the brand. And if you have very clear associations, it takes a lot more investment to to charge that in another way, or to, to, to wipe away people's associations isn't so easy. So. And a healthy name can be used in storytelling. And I think we will come back to that as well. And also when Casper talks about taglines. And a good name works now and in the long run. So how long is the life cycle of your product or service or your company? and choose something that can work for you during all that time. And it needs to allow expansion as well of, as uh, the offering, if you include more services or more products, for example, and also expansion into new geographical markets. And a good name supports sales and creates brand equity. It is also registrable as a company name and a trademark and over the internet. Well, company name, if that is, uh, if that's relevant for you, of course. Would you like to comment anything here? Yeah, um, the company name, in, especially in Swedish, in Sweden, um, you got a very good name protection from just uh, register your, your company name. Uh, actually, it is as strong and as good as a trademark registration. And uh, that is something you, you keep forgetting in Sweden, that you think that your company name 
is, is one thing and the trademark registration is another, but there is a, a cross uh, protection there. So if you have a company name, stick to it if it's good, because it's, you, as I said, the, the line system, you have to be careful not to, to, to um, take another name or, or, or change the name of your company if it's a good one. It's old and good, stick to it. Uh, so can I ask you something? Yes, please. So what about, so normally I give the advice to companies to not only to register the company name, but also always protecting the, the trademark. Yes. Should I change my advice? No. So it's, could you it's, it's, a good, it's a good advice. <laughs> Um, as I said, it's only for Sweden uh, that the company name uh, protection is so strong. If you have, I mean, in, in Europe, you have the, the national registration offices. So you go and protect your name in PRV in Sweden. And then you also have the EU protection. And uh, if you have um, a company name and then someone else go and, and apply for a trademark in the UL, U, EU level, uh, you cannot use your company registration uh, as, as a ground for revoking the application on the EU level. But if you have a trademark registration in Sweden, you can say to the ones behind you in line that, hey, hey, that was mine. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's uh, if you have, I, I see so many times that it's just the same name is registered as a company name. A, a trademark registration in Sweden and also in the EU level. Mm. And then it's a conflict of rights and it's really, really uh, not a good situation. Mm. Uh, so the first thing you, you, can, you must remember, yes, a good name is a company name. It's a trade, it's trademarked and you must keep an eye on the EU registrations as, as well because they are, um, on the level above, so the, they have a protection in the total of EU, but you can be the first one using the name in Sweden, and you can use you can you can have a, a ground for revoking the EU application, but you keep must monitor it yourself. So that is um, that is a common mistake as well, but no. Trademark protection. Mm -hmm. Keep telling people to, yeah. to trademark their names. Yeah. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay. okay, so these are some examples. Um, I just wanted to uh, basically mention the examples in, uh, in the center here with the, the, the Sony Ericsson examples uh, when talking about storytelling and also when we're going to talk about uh, taglines. So, Earlier I said that a good name also supports your storytelling. Um, so this was a, an assignment, it's pretty many years back now. You can see on the, on the models of the phones mm. that they look pretty ancient with um, nowadays. Anyway, the, the, the assignment was that two, so, and you know, within the technology industry, um, it has been very common to use alphanumerical denominations for products, right? Mm. And how emotional is that? What does it evoke? Do we even remember uh, abbreviations anymore? I remember that I did make an effort and I did remember my, my first few mobile phones, what they were called, mm -hmm. T-O, X, T -O, or whatever, K-10, or, or, but we don't do that anymore. So the idea here with Sony Ericsson, they made a, a major strategical change in their communication and strategic branding to move from this technology and information-based communication to more evocative and emotionally driven communication. Mm -hmm. So the assignment for us was two key product families needed to have real names, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Names mm -hmm. that we can actually remember and play with. And one of the product groups was uh, musical music phones for, uh, for youth. So those names, they asked us to create names that were uh, lyrical sounding. Mm -hmm. So the names that they chose and launched were uh, Yendo, Yiso, Spyro, and Silo. Mm -hmm. So that supports that, that the storytelling and what they would like to communicate, their messages to that target group. Whilst the other product group was their so-called eco, uh, ecological friendly, environmentally friendly 
line, a green, a green, the green heart phone, sorry. <laughs> and the names they chose were uh, three names, Aspen, Elm, Hazel, and Cedar, as you can see, which supports that story. So it's pretty obvious to, and I think it's a, a pretty good example. Um, I don't think I will go into, do you have any questions? <clears throat> Not right now. Mm, that's cool. So these are some of the some examples. When uh, the Spotify example, for example, you could see that so many companies they just use the success of Spotify to create their own uh, names for their businesses, and that's kind of borrowing the success of another player. How cool is that in the long run? So when Spotify no longer is very cool you can st still see that you stole the name idea from Spotify. So I would be really careful with that. Another common um, way to get a name through or, or to, to find a unique name is to drop the vowels, as you can see on the left-hand side. Um, and that's something that has been really common in, within um, the tech industry. And that's also something I... I don't say that anything is right or, or wrong here. Uh, we saw it already with uh, uh, the phone model uh, Razer many years back now, it was um, Motorola. Uh, they started with this, but we have seen this increase. But bear in mind that in five years or in seven years, this might be associated in another way. And just a comment, uh, and I would like you to comment mm -hmm. on this as well. So, also when it comes to, to dropping a vowel or change the spelling of a name to, to get it more unique, to get yes. it through, through, so to speak, how does that work in, from the legal point of view? Uh, there are, I mean, to be able to register your trademark, it must be, it must have a level of distinctiveness. Mm -hmm. It cannot be descriptive. And if, if you look at the, the clever mark, if you have clever, it would be rejected because it's, it's just descriptive of, of something very clever, a product that is clever. And uh, I'm not sure that um, it depends on the registration office. The practices are not the same in the different countries, but I would say that the Swedish um, trademark registration office would say that no clever spelled that way would not do, do uh, it must be like the figure, the, the logo. Maybe if it's like a logo, they would accept it. Um, but I think it's very important that, to, to think about the scope of protection that you get. If you, have, if you think that, okay, I got this clever mark registered, and think, yeah, now I've got a really good name. It's impossible to protect your brand in a good way. Because um, if you have another one, spelling clever in another way with maybe a K or um, misspell it in another way, you cannot say that, hey, it was mine. Because what is really, really distinctive in your trademark is the way how you misspelled it, mm -hmm. not the name in itself. So that's why I agree with you, Katarina, that it's not a good, good name to take a descriptive name and, and misspell it. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> so, and I know that many, many, many entrepreneurs, they choose this to get a domain name. Yeah. And when it comes to, to get and, and register a domain name, that works fine. What does not work is when it comes to the trademark point yeah. of view, since mm -hmm. it is similarity uh, between different marks in your line of business that is important to avoid. Um, I just wanted to comment on the clever uh, mark that we see here with the, I love the logo type, by the way. And still, um, so it, we started off with 3D and then we came to virtual reality, VR. And now we are already in AR, which is augmented reality. Mm. And that is fast moving over to IR, which is immersive reality. So this is when the, the technology shifts, they are really very fast. So this could be that clever, actually we shared premises, they, they um, uh, well, I know the guys. It's clear um, now. <laughs> yes, <So>. exactly. 
So it, it could be that they find themselves with a name that is obsolete already. So I would really, really not like anyone who had, has been to one of these seminars or had even one conversation with, with, uh, with us, with me, to, to go into that trap. Um, and another example, Instabox, of course, uh, you can see they borrowed that name from the success of Instagram. And so when Instagram is forgotten and we are Snapchatting and whatever we are doing, this will also feel a little bit boring, I think. And it's a legal risk as well. Mm. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Okay, so five tips to choose a strong brand name. For me, it would be the first one, stick out to stick out, to stick around, <laughs> to be braver and be bolder than you thought from the beginning. Um, it can be really uncomfortable. And it needs to be a little bit al dente, even within five years time or seven years time, if you're going to, for something that is for the long run. If you're choosing a na name for a snack that is only to survive during the soccer season, well, then you can choose whatever, right? So this is when we're going for long-term uh, names and brands. I'm oh, sorry, Casper again. Now, the other tips, tip is to express who you are as a company rather than what you are. Um, so of course you need to, to describe and, and tell people what you do in your offering. Uh, and maybe the name is not the best place uh, or channel to do that. So more reflect the, the, the soul and who you, who you are in the world than what you are. That's a really a serious tip for my side. Dress for success. So if you are going to be a success out in the world, you need to, to actually uh, see to that you can own and control your name in, in other countries, for example, as well, and that it works from the uh, linguistical point of view. And the assessment is necessary, as we have talked about, both the legal and the, the cultural one. And if it's not fun for you in your organization, take help and get it done. I see so many companies, they, they think, and smaller companies in particular, think that they need to do it all by themselves. Everything they need to do all by themselves. And this is really difficult. And when it comes to names, everyone has an opinion and a point of view. So many times it is quicker and results are really a lot better as well if you take someone from the outside that can actually run that process. Mm -hmm. uh, and another thing, it's very easy to, to have a little bit too much of an inside and out perspective when you work with these things internally. So it's much easier to have someone from the outside to, to see also what it is that really turns the customers on and what you can communicate with them. Cool. So... Thank you. And we will also talk about taglines now. Do you have any nice. questions on this first part, by the way? Uh, maybe one. Mm -hmm. What is the difference on a name registration and a trademark? What is sort of the... Uh, Great what, question. Yeah, what is a trademark compared to a name registration? As you said, it was strong in Sweden with the name registration. But when you go outside, you have to have the trademark as well. Mm. What is sort of the key differences? In, or I will repeat the question so you hear yeah. if the mic isn't. Uh, um, so the question is, so what is a company registration yeah. and what is a trademark registration? Mm -hmm. And maybe also we would like to know what is a trademark and what is a brand? So yes. I leave over to Karin oh, to oh, oh. clarify That's this. Maybe a big question. But <laughs> no, it is okay. <clears throat> it is really the, the, the company name is the, the formal name that you register when you create your company. Okay. <clears throat> so it's with an AB yeah. in Sweden. Oh, the long one. Maybe. The, the long one, maybe, yeah. But um, it's the usual uh, strategy is, uh, or I mean, if you're a small company, you have the same, the trademark that you use will be a part of your company name. <clears throat> okay. So that is, that is the most common way to do it. So you don't have to work with two different names in the beginning. Uh, and the trademark and a brand in, in, in Sweden, we have just one word, varumärke. Mm -hmm. That is very confusing because you can mean so many different things with it. 
in English, it's, it's a little bit easier with trademark and brand. Mm -hmm. But the trademark can be a word, mm -hmm. a word mark. And it can be a logotype. Mm -hmm. So it's a figurative um, sign. And it could also be a sound. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very it, a color in itself. So what can be trademarked? That is, uh, I mean, people write books about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the most common uh, signs are words, of course, mm -hmm. and logotypes that you use. And, uh, and if you compare the word trademark and brand, the trademark is what you see. So what, when you look at the, for example, the um, aquarium name. Mm -hmm. That is the trademark. But the, the brand is what you create, the associations created to it. What, what, what comes up in your mind when you see it? So what you fill the word with, it's really, if you compare it with uh, a symbol, mm -hmm. and that you see a, a symbol of a man or a woman, you know that, okay, behind those doors, I know what's in behind them. So you think the same way with branding. You have a, something that you look at and something that you create and that is much bigger than just what you see from the beginning. And as, as you said that in the beginning, we have just a name, IKEA, for example. Uh, the first time you saw that, you didn't have a clue what it was. What, what is it? Is it a car company? Is it, you, you don't know. But then you have to learn your audience. What is it? What do you sell? And what, what do you stand for? What are your values? And then you begin to, to build your brand. Yeah. Thank you so much. And maybe another question on that note. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I get the question, so what's the stronger protection? Is it the word in itself or is it the, the logotype or the figure mark? Mm -hmm. What is the stronger protection? Mm -hmm. You protect what you see, actually. So you, um, I, my recommendation would be to, to register both because a uh, logo is sometimes changed during yeah. the years to come. And as I said, you have to keep your place in the line. So a word mark uh, is very good. And then if you have a very special logo, uh, if you have a logo with the color that you think this is my color in my line of business, then you have to protect that as well. Yeah, thank you. So, and I, I also get that the, the, maybe the recommendation and the advice would be a little bit different for a large corporation or for a small, small business. So if you take my company as, a, as an example, as a small business, so Aquarium, I have chosen to register that as a, as a trademark, a word mark in the European Communion via EU IPO um, and as a Swedish company name as well, which means it's a trademark here protected in, in Sweden as well. Um, and with a larger budget, I might have chosen also to, to protect the logotype or even the queue that is a bit uh, specific here so that could so this is more about your your ip strategy yes. uh, as a whole cool thank you so much okay Casper, and we're leaving over and we are going to talk about taglines yes. i will just move the camera a little bit closer to camera Right. Okay, so can I just ask you, what, what is the tagline? Well, the tagline basically is um, a member, memorable phrase that uh, defines your brand and uh, instantly creates attention from your potential buyers, mm -hmm. consumers. And um, it can be used to explain your brand personality, uh, your offer, or uh, uh, your story. And uh, it can also help to build value over time. Uh, 
uh, and to make you stand out and uh, be unique. That's so uh, interesting. I, I love what you said now that the tagline can reflect, and I think you will give us examples as well, the brand personality. So this is the, you remember my tip that you uh, express who you are more than what you are, yeah. but also reflect the offering. Yeah, and that's but, more than what I mean, you I are. I mean, this right? is a, a tagline is uh, much wider, of course, than, yeah. than uh, uh, the name itself. So uh, uh, there are actually, you could say there are five different types of taglines and most common ones are imperative taglines, which is <clears throat> uh, uh, an just example is just do it, right? <laughs> uh, and um, so th that's sort of the old way to do it, to uh, um, command your buyers to uh, take action. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we see a shift from uh, power of the corporation to the power of the consumer. So perhaps telling people what to do isn't the way to go anymore. And therefore, uh, some people claim that the tagline is actually dead. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you believe it's dead? No, I mean, that, that's, <laughs> that's a stretch. But I think um, nowadays uh, you can redefine the tagline. Like, uh, for instance, in the past, you have all these big slogans and stuff. And perhaps there's really no place for that anymore. Because, uh, for instance, uh, a lot of marketing nowadays is done in uh, in your iPhone, mm -hmm. and it's uh, you get very limited space. So a, a tagline would take up half that space, mm -hmm. and perhaps you need to uh, uh, talk about your offer instead. So that may not be the place for brand building. However, uh, I mean, taglines in some form mm -hmm. uh, is used everywhere all the time in in uh, social media marketing as well mm -hmm. and i mean a tagline can be a headline or uh, a sign off on a, on a short film mm -hmm. um, so it depends how, how you define tagline i guess but um thank you that's so cool so would you um, like to share some examples Lula? sure um can you all see uh, see this yeah yeah okay. Uh, so the first one is uh, for Adidas. It's um, originally from the 70s when uh, Muhammad Ali signed up uh, for Adidas. And um, I mean, obviously, uh, working with someone like him, uh, you get some free uh, <laughs> free marketing there. Yeah. Uh, perhaps not free <laughs> but uh, uh, so this tagline is actually from taken from one of his speeches uh, i think he said something like uh, impossible is just a big word thrown around by small men impossible is nothing mm -hmm. and uh, but as a tagline in itself it also plays with of course with nothing is impossible mm -hmm. uh, making that more interesting like uh, <laughs> impossible being the uh, uh, the sort of starting point. Yeah. Uh, but so uh, I think this is a really strong one, and uh, uh, I prefer this one to just do it, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, uh, in sports, I feel uh, it can sometimes be a bit uh, existential. Like the taglines are really, uh, um, uh, it could be seen as mumbo jumbo. Mm -hmm as well as inspiration. Yeah. So um, and I, I like this one, but they changed it now to uh, all in instead, which could be seen as uh, um, an imperative tagline, but also perhaps like a welcoming, welcoming and including one, because it's like we're yeah. all in the team yeah. sort of spirit. The double meaning is, uh, yeah, is I think also, so. it's pretty appealing to yeah. me at least. It's clever. But I mean, this one is, uh, uh, it's also good because it sort of uh, checks uh, all the all the points on the list. It's mm -hmm. short. It's uh, it's uh, um, uh, it's unique. It's a uh, powerful, yeah. uh, easy to say, easy to uh, remember, and um, obviously speaks like volumes about the brand. So. Yeah. 
And this is really a good example also what 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 you do, Casper uh, as a copywriter and and Casper is also um, in my creative team when we work together with clients with uh, coming up with, with brand names. So, and also when you when we work together in more like messaging when you when you so this to express a, something that's really simple with other words that's that's a really you need to be so skilled to do that i know no. i know <laughs> you are you are so i think this is a really great example of that just to to you still you 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 get it and it's expressed in an interesting way yeah and i think also it needs to um balance well with the uh, with the image of course yeah I mean, uh, so uh, it becomes something bigger when, yeah, when, it is, when it's him in the background. Yeah, it is yet another element yeah. in the brand, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Next one. So this is Volvo. Uh, it's a, it's a, an elegant and perhaps more discreet tagline than the one we just looked at. Um, but it grows on you because uh, uh, it really nails down like their two main uh, brand uh, selling points, mm -hmm. which is safety and longevity. Mm -hmm. um, so then it becomes quite obvious uh, what they're after, but uh, I think it's, it's really positive. And, but, but the thing I, I feel about this one is that perhaps it's too generic. Mm -hmm. And, and a bit safe and, and certainly not that original because uh, if you if you would just take away take away the Volvo logo and put like a juice there instead yeah. it would also be like yeah juice for life it's, yeah. <laughs> so it could be for anything yeah. yeah so that way I mean it's about it's a bit safe yeah but it's that, also about yeah. safety so <laughs> I saw that Viet yeah, has the same you know the, the all right yeah. do they Okay. Oh, so Karin, and, and th that's really interesting. About uh, can you protect like uh, a tagline? That's uh, that is not that. Least, oh well, it depends. Mm -hmm. It's the same criteria for for protecting as I mean, it is a trademark. I said when it's a trademark. Um, I mean, you have to be distinctive. You have to. It must be free in your registration class. But the interesting part is if you can. And protect it if it has protection uh, as a, a copyright protection. Mm. Um, because if also just two words combined, if it's original enough, it could be copyrighted. It could have copyright protection. And then you can prevent others from using it. But then it must be very special. I so doubt that one is. This is not copyrighted. No. Uh, but if, I know one example is that um, this is in Swedish now, Nyfiken Gul. That is a uh, curious yellow. It's very, uh, it's a strange combination of two words. Um, that is, has been debated to have uh, the level of originality to, to get copyright protection. So, so if, even if it's very um, short, it could be. Um, Protected as a copyright. Right. Uh, Which was that? It, it's a title of an old film. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so um, it could be protected as a, as a trademark, of course, mm -hmm. but then as the same criteria as, as everyone else's. Um, so uh, available for registration, free and distinctive enough. And, um, and the, the second one, the second ground for protection would be copyright. Thank you. And that would be the screen back to Casper. Yes, so the next one is for a very famous movie franchise. And I guess you all heard like the first alien film had one of the most famous taglines ever, which is uh, in space, no one can hear you scream. Yeah. Uh, the second one had, had in my opinion, quite weak one, which was this time is war. Mm -hmm. Could be anything, but Boring. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but this one is really interesting because um, I think uh, some people even might might find it a bit offensive. So, uh, and it's also who does it speak to? Mm -hmm. Who's the audience? Mm -hmm. Things like that. But 
um, I guess the most, the witty part about this one is obviously in the picture, there are two queens. Mm -hmm. So who's the bitch? Mm -hmm. That's and, the interesting part. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, uh, even Sigourney Weaver, who plays uh, uh, Sergeant Ripley, actually uh, supposedly called up the marketing team and asked, is that supposed to be me? <laughs> 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 so, uh, uh, and this sort of tagline, I mean, I mean with movies, you expect uh, a witty, really clever tagline. Mm -hmm because it's, it's such a big part of the history and, and like you don't make movies without good catch lines and catch lines and taglines and cool marketing. So, uh, but this one created a lot of buzz, which is basically, I mean, you want the fans to um, see the next one as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but this is a... Uh, um, Can I say something about that as well? Um, there is a rule that says that you cannot protect trademarks that are offensive in mm. Sweden. Um, but in the US, they had the same rule for many, many years. But recently, there was a, um, a decision that says that that is in conflict with the freedom of speech. Mm. So now it's open for registration, all kinds of, of offensive marks in the US. Cool. So, so we might uh, see was, some interesting was, yeah, developments in, tried the in the. Uh, I think it was the Redskins, one mm -hmm. of the, the cases, and the other one was Lance. I think it was a band mm -hmm. with Asian um, Americans, and they said that we want to use this uh, as we to take off the the bad connection to it and and do something very good about that word, mm -hmm. and uh, the. The judges agreed. Cool. Thank you. Next one. Okay, so the next one is a real classic. It's for Wheaties, which is a, a healthy cereal, supposedly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never tasted it, but um, it's big in the US. And uh, this is actually from the 30s. Uh, and the brand started off as uh, they promoted themselves on radio, I think, uh, for uh, baseball games. And they sort of got 90% something of, of the players behind them. So uh, the credibility was there, of course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I think the interesting part is that it became such a larger than life expression, the tagline, is something we all like say. Uh, and obviously for them it meant something uh, healthy and sporty and fresh but when we say it, it's more like having a beer for breakfast kind of mm. thing like a <laughs> junk food or uh, something that's not good for you so shows what can happen over time as well with an expression like that yeah. um but a, a real good one strong one cool yeah and this one is uh, quite interesting uh, for many reasons uh Clash was a pioneers in punk, uh, British band, and um, this sort of uh, happened overnight. And a uh, uh, really like do it yourself sort of mentality around the band, the hated authority, stuff like that. And they still sign with um, CBS. No, uh, BBC. No. Uh, oh, well, a big company. <laughs> and uh, they promoted them. Uh, uh, and use that tagline in TV ads. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think the band was probably quite uncomfortable with the whole thing. Uh, and people said that a punk died the night they signed and stuff like that. And they got a lot of money for it. But uh, I mean, it's a very cocky tagline, but then they follow, follow up with uh, uh, one of the most uh, uh, historic records ever made so they sort of won everyone over and the tagline became true so it was all right uh, and i mean in music uh, it's all very very delicate like how you promote a band or what you say so you probably shouldn't say anything at all really just let them play uh, i think mo most bands want it that way but they still did this which is kind of surprising but uh now it's like, oh, the class is the only band that matters, which I guess it's a 
pretty good <laughs> it is. thing to uh, that's so cool you know, also uh, and and when when it comes to also choosing choosing your name choosing your tagline so this is a good example also when you, you, you check okay so what are other bands doing for example okay they are very modest or low-key or whatever so would we like to do that or would we like to stick out and do something completely different it's the same when you choose the brand name so okay so check your line of industry your, your industry your line of business okay so how is naming done here would we like to do something similar or something completely different so this is a really good example of that as well when you you stick out and you you take your you just go there and you you take your space yeah i love that <laughs> another comment yeah. from a legal perspective is that you have to think about the marketing law as well that if you say that this is the best band in the yeah. world or this is the cheapest uh, computer mm. it must be true yeah i mean it goes without saying but it's it's uh, i've seen so many examples that they just oh we, it was true for a minute but mm. then the next day it wasn't and then it's ILU. yeah i think this is sort of um it, it's just they probably knew that in this case yeah, the that, that case it, is, it's it stood okay. out yeah, and yeah because yeah, it's such a special thing to do but yeah. i mean in general you should never go for a tagline like we make the best hamburgers or something because mm -hmm. it, it's obviously hard to live up to as well and it's yeah. going to come back to you, so. and and also a comment when it comes to uh, something you, you um oh what was it yeah i i got the um, email marketing from uh, the roll-up king uh, right. yesterday so roll-ups is uh, promotional uh, when you have your advertising a uh, roll-up king so that is when you claim to be the best in in um, well in <laughs> in your in your mm -hmm. industry that could be also strike back so and uh, if you need to say that you are quality something in the name mm, yeah that's <clears throat> yeah it's the old, it's the old show it, show and tell thing many though. times it works the opposite way correct yeah, so, so another careful. one, uh, uh, and I think it's commonly used actually, but it's starting your time with we know, it's like we know projects, mm. uh, we know burgers, we know... Mm. We know bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but, yeah <laughs> but that's okay, why do you need to tell me that? Yeah. I mean, how will you show that? Uh, if you didn't know it, I would <laughs> buy your product. It's, yeah. So it's sort of like, uh, you just wasting space really there. Yeah, and, and it's an inter internal your, thing, your so, so you shouldn't communicate that it's exactly. the strategy yeah so. so that's where you are more inside out perspective than having the outside and in perspective that's what yeah. normally called. which leads us to the last one Yay. Uh, this is a real old school ad of course uh, i mean just look at the copy it's it's uh about four times too long uh with a uh, modern measures so but, what is this what's the product uh it's it's a headache pill mm. Mm. So a uh, uh, plop plop fist fist oh what a relief it is I think it is the the whole tagline <laughs> read out so uh, I mean it's obviously a really long tag as well uh, with the ex exclamation mark and everything uh, but it does have an outside in perspective because it's it goes inside the head of uh, the consumer Definitely. like what what you think about when you use their product. What is it you get? The, yeah. the, what problems do you solve for the, how do you make right. people's lives better or easier? Yeah. Uh, so, but I, I have a hard time seeing like a tag like this being uh, used today. <laughs> <laughs> it is a funny example. Yeah, and also, it's, not, it's an obvious time. It's a David, David Ogilvy product, sort of. So, so um, yeah. Yeah. we have this long text. You had things for the radio commercials and all those. So right. it was a, it's a combined sure, pro sure. promise. Yeah. So it's, you cannot only take that one. It's, it's part of a big communication story. Yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. That's so cool. And it's, and it's yours. I mean, you can own it. Yeah. It's copyrighted. Yeah. Mm. And you have the sound. And you have the sound. <laughs> but I also feel like uh, nowadays, I mean, you can do pretty much whatever you want with marketing. Because as long as it's unique and I mean, if you're into uh, sort of, if you have a retro brand, for instance, mm -hmm. this sort of thing might be the, the way for you to go. Yeah. It's kind of choosing your style. Yeah. How you would like to communicate. It really is. <clears throat> and another thing, 
um, is that of course you can if you have a tagline say that you use uh, that you, you have your, your new your new brand your name of your your business or your product and you would like to clarify a little bit what it is that's also one way of using a tagline or sometimes sure. a catchphrase there are yeah. so many different I mean, you could, you could just be very descriptive if you, if you like to. Uh, it doesn't have to be super clever or anything. Perhaps if, if you have a very sort of abstract name, yeah. uh, fantasy name, uh, then you might want to even things up a bit. And, um, so say you would like to clarify that you are in the health industry, for example. So what could an example be? <clears throat> plop, plop, fist, fist. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, but yeah, like uh, um, solutions for uh, for uh, health and mind. Yeah, that could be a tagline. Better life, yeah. or yeah. whatever. So and okay, so that clarifies. Okay, so now I see this new brand name that I haven't seen before, and I get like a concept of where to where to sort it in my <laughs> what industry. And then after a few years, when it is established and well known on the marketplace, then you can change the tagline right of course i mean if you have a new marketing campaign you can always go for another tagline or so then you can maybe be less descriptive of or, or not communicate the line of business but more what you something more emotional yeah or perhaps. both i mean many campaigns use uh, 10 taglines or perhaps not 10 but five different mm -hmm. ones and, and um, you see that all the time i work a lot of uh, on a lot of campaigns like for uh, subway campaigns for instance when you know uh, when you you're in the you're in the stairs and you see uh, uh, oh, yeah. the same brand for five, with five different mm -hmm. uh, uh, posters mm -hmm. and you have a, a new tagline for each one but isn't that more like cash lines when you have a tagline then you have a cash line that can be for the for the promotion campaign uh, i'd say uh, it depends on what, what what you want on the poster yeah. but but uh, i've done both so, but a catch line, I'd say that that's more of a unique selling point. Yeah. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, if if it's for a film, it's like a, from the director of Titanic. That that's what I know as a, as a catch line. Well, uh, uh, a tagline is more brand building. So another question on lingo: Is slogan and tagline the same thing for you? Uh, I, th I think yeah, basically. But but I think uh, slogan is. That's like uh, the billboard, uh, you know, the big, the big one. The like, best a man can get. Yeah, that, that's a that's a brand. What, cl what classic? Brand? Uh, yes, <laughs> everyone knows yeah. it. Yeah. But, a, but, a, but a tagline, I mean, uh, I feel can be used in, in um, a lot of areas. While while uh, a slogan, that's something that comes with a logo. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That is cool. So, do we have any questions? <clears throat> Any comments from the peeps online? So we are basically on in the, the end of the presentation, the slides we have prepared and we are happy to just have a conversation with you. We have 15 more minutes to play if you would like to. So you can unmute yourselves and just ask or comment if you would like to. So I, I love how these different parts, they go together so well. Um, and to, it, needs to, it needs to start with, with a company and your business idea and who, who are you and what is it that you would like to to be and, and do and provide an offer in the world, basically. It all boils, boils down to that. And then look at what different ways can I actually convey this and talk about this. Uh, so there are so many different elements in the brand as we have talked about. Mm -hmm. And these different elements, they can be vitalized. The tagline can be changed, for example. You can work with the colors and after 10 years, you might change the colors to modernize it a little bit. The only element in the brand that you cannot do that with is actually the name. So that is also a reason, a really important reason why you need to think it through and see to that it works long-term for you. 
this is kind of challenging since many new businesses and young businesses and entrepreneurs, um, they don't really have the budget or we don't really have the strategy long term. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you, you just need to, to jump in there and do the best you can mm -hmm. with the budget and the, well, the tools that you have. And at some point you might need to make a change. And that's no biggie. Well, it is a biggie in, in one way, but if you avoid making a necessary change that is limiting your business, that's also a business strategic mistake, I would say. So I would just like everyone to make conscious uh, decisions. And I often get the question, oh, you know what? We are called this, and they give me, me their name. So what do you say about our name? And then I tell them, hey, my job is not to have opinions about your name. So my question to you is, does this work? Does this name work for you and your business? Does it support your, your brand and your business? And if the answer is yes, go ahead. That's great. I would, I yeah. I would like to, to sort of get into this discussion because there are so many startups today. Yes. Uh, and, and sort of the epicenter of, of, of startups is Sweden in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there has to be produced so many names. Yes. <laughs> yes. How, how do these young persons go about doing this? I mean, they must ask you. Yes. Mm -hmm. We, um, and it's funny, we, we actually, uh, we have the, the offices um, in a place where there are many startup companies and I have invited them and no one is here, uh, which is kind of interesting. I have had conversations with, with them and also we, we actually had uh, an activity that was directed to them. Mm -hmm. And last month I, I had another seminar uh, where I had a serial entrepreneur uh, invited as a guest and he gave a lot of examples and advice also to startup companies. And I remember one of his tips was actually to don't rush it. And you can also go to your investors, for example, when you are to, to raise mm -hmm. capital without a name. You can have a, a provisional name, um, not just to take something, you know, and, and rush it. There could be another way of looking at that as well so if you have and when you have your name in place and with a correct protection as well of your ipr when you are uh, looking for in for capital for example or even if you're um, facing an exit and you would like to sell your company you will probably get a higher higher price you you will get more money for your company when you have all those things in place since potential investors in your company or buyers, they will uh, do a due diligence and look at what are the intellectual property rights, what is in place, what is not, what needs to be done. So that's just another way to, to look at it. So no one wants to pay money to get in trouble. So <laughs> I don't know. that's a good one. <laughs> good tag. <laughs> Maybe that's the tag for Karin's uh, uh, agency yeah i have a question what, what is what would your recommendation be if, if you have a company that sells a single product yes like we do we sell a single product mm -hmm. and, uh, we don't really have a product name it's sort of our, our company name or product name is sort of yeah the same mm -hmm. we have an internal name for our product which i now try to sort of get out there just to to separate company from the product mm -hmm. and since we are looking making a total sort of evolution of our brand. We, I'm thinking maybe I should, because we want to sell our product. Our name is pretty established in our industry, but would you say that when you have a single product, is it better to put that first and then buy a sort of product X by this company? Yeah, this sort is of an interesting question. The, the, the weight to the product. Yeah. Not yeah. The, the company since our company is established everybody knows us but yeah. the product is, is is where we have the opportunity maybe to to create something totally new yeah so the question is when you when you are a product company and yeah. you are a one product company yeah. 
so far. Mm -hmm. So is it important to have two different names, one for the business and one for the product, or could you go with the same name? Uh, so this is a great question. And my general advice is to go with as few levels as possible and, and with as few names and brands as possible. Um, and look at your business strategy long term. Yeah. So if you don't have another product in pipeline, like close yeah. by, I would say go for the same name. Yeah. So if you're going, as I know that you are looking at maybe create a new name yeah. and new brand, I would go for the same name for the business and the product. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you, if you mm -hmm. also develop a new product, just use another brand and another name and another brand for that one. Um, it could be a risky way if you are a development, developing mm -hmm. company and you have many products. Yeah. If one product is really related to your business name mm -hmm. and you would like to sell mm -hmm. just one product, for example, yeah. Yeah. that could inflict on your, that could be complicated. And if not, I would say go for it. Mm -hmm. so, so I would like everyone to be efficient mm -hmm. <laughs> and not, um, it, it is really investment intense to build brands. So mm -hmm. you don't create a new name or a new brand for the sheer fun of it. Mm -hmm. I love it though. Mm -hmm. uh, but to put it in the market, you need to be wise with your, mm -hmm. your investment and where you put your energy and your, your capital as well. So how would, what would you comment? No, I, I agree. And also, especially if you go international, if you go to aim at expanding geographically, it's, I mean, it's so expensive if yeah. you work with different names. I can give an example. I recently worked with uh, a company in the, well, software uh, business. Uh, they, they are based in, they are, it's a Swedish company and they have a, a global product. It's a project management uh, tool. Mm. Uh, where you can use to, to work together in teams. And uh, the, the company is called Handsoft. And they're in, in Uppsala. And they have another product called Handsoft X. So that's mm -hmm. kind of product and company the same. So this new, new product, they really wanted to have something different because the target groups, the product were different and, and the target groups as well. Mm -hmm. And the name they chose um, in the end, and which is launch is Favro. And, mm -hmm. What they did was that they also changed the company name or even separated it to another company. Mm -hmm. So they, they actually used the product name is Favro and the company name is Favro. Okay. So this is what they have launched uh, globally now. So they put up a new business with that new name. I think they did. Yeah, yeah. did. That wasn't really on the agenda when I was involved, yeah, but no. they also said to me that it is important that this can be um, a company name. They were kind of pondering: should we change the the, the existing, like the Handsoft company name, to this new name? So we opened up for the possibility to do that. Mm -hmm. What I think they did was to have two separate uh, companies in the end. But anyway, the the requirements were the same when we started off in in the project. Mm -hmm. Really fun <laughs> project. <laughs> Excellent clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a really great question. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Would you like to say something, Kasper? Um, and just that uh, we talked about uh, Favro. Yeah. They also, uh, um, you see, uh, they use storytelling with, with a new name. Mm -hmm. And they're really into sort of building a feel around it. Yeah. So um, that's a. Uh, an efficient way to speak to certain uh, target audiences, I think. Uh, yeah. So uh, I think the story they 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 tell when it comes to the name, and this is also a piece of advice to anyone who ch who chooses a new name that always have a story to tell. Um, so they claim that they didn't find the kind of perfect product for them to to use when working in project projects with people in different uh, parts of the world and so on so they picked the favorite pieces from the different systems or software they knew in the marketplace and they developed their favorites uh tool and software that really worked well for them 
and hopefully for the rest of the world as well. So that's kind of how Favor uh, was created. From, and it's not really descriptive Favor. of what the product does. No, it's not. not. No. So this is one example of an associative name yeah. that, and you can have the association to something different. This is kind of more their wish to be the preferred yeah, yeah. Uh, choice. But as long as you can back it with this, some sort of argument, uh -huh. so that if someone asks you, why, how, what is this name and why yes. are you called this? Yeah. Then you should have that story behind you. Yes, exactly. To sort of and this is where you can link that asso association. That is more a, an emotional bond or, yeah. or link and where you uh, contact a relationship with your tribe or your target yeah, audience. Yeah, and you could be associative also to something feature-based. Mm. That's not, a, in my experience, not that effective. No. Uh, or it's different. It's what, what happens is that you get different kind of names. Mm. So but it could, could yeah. work well also, depending. Yeah. yeah, but also, I mean, your offer has to be real, but your story doesn't, sort of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. So, <laughs> Although I hate when they say, oh, 1887 legacy, yeah. and they, you know, this was the uh, General Peterson was behind this recipe. Yeah, but like, I, I think it, it, it works. <laughs> I think well, it works well. Yeah. I mean, Coca Cola, for instance. Do you know there is a recipe secret somewhere? What are you going to say? Um, no, but That's yeah, I love, that. I love that story. <laughs> yeah. And, and Coca Cola is an old brand. Mm -hmm. And the, it, there is some truth in that. Uh, but when you do that, like now, and you kind of, when it's very fabricated, I, at least I don't like it. Yeah, but it's like, oh, it I, love, I love these jeans from, uh, American jeans from the 1940s. Oh, Arling Sauce, 2012, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Pretty, yeah, sometimes, of course, you need Maybe to. Maybe also the customer doesn't really care or, have the energy to research or, or do that sort yeah. of research. Yeah. Standing there looking at your name, uh, it's like, oh, okay, sounds credible, but I don't really yeah. have time to verify that. Yeah. But sometimes also a great story becomes obsolete. I remember mm. working with, with uh, what you have, it's American whiskey, what was the name again? Jack Daniels, mm. a couple of years ago. And, and they, all of the, the clients, the customers, that like the old rocker style mm. uh, whiskey, mm. they died out. Yeah. <laughs> and the young ones even said, oh, who's that rock and roll singer? I don't know about him. And oh, who's yeah. Mick Jagger? I mean, <laughs> that's no. totally obsolete. So they yeah. just totally changed to the old heritage from the late 19th century, mm. with the old choo-choo trains, right, yeah, which yeah. is the real story. Yeah. Yeah. So they had to go back, not being the rock and roll whiskey again. That's so yeah. interesting, mm. yeah. So if you didn't hear that, um, mm -hmm. beautiful online people um, was about the whiskey Jack Daniels and they have had to change their communication from being the rock and roll um, whiskey since all the rock and rollers died out mm -hmm. and now they need to talk about someone, something else, another story and they gave the true story, that, the true story, they went yeah. back to the old oh. story. Yes. Yeah. To, to catch a new, new target mm -hmm. group. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. I love that. And that is also a way to, um, another example, um, there was a, a clothes brand in, in, in our country here in Sweden that was called uh, JC, uh, JC in Swedish, and that abbreviation stood for Junior Center. So it was basically a store for kids clothes. Mm. And they wanted to expand and they wanted to buy or to sell products to grown-ups as well, of course. Mm. So what they did, they, they actually uh, kept the, the name or, and the logotype, which was J and JC, and they changed what it stands for, what, what it stood for, okay. to jeans and clothes instead of junior center, which is kind of brilliant. You just change the communication and you don't need to change all of the, you didn't need to change the name or even the logotype. I think they did, they chose to. But that is also a good way to, to vitalize your, well, this in this case, your, your, your business. But they didn't and the succeed. Brand. They didn't? Not really. How do you mean? Mm. Well, where, where are the JC? Oh, business. nowadays. Okay, wow. business-wise, you mean. Wow. Okay. <laughs> a failing business. And a good name can never, <laughs> never <laughs> save a failing yeah, business. Yeah, come back. And I'm not really sure I would say it's a good name either, but still. <laughs> um. 
Yeah. Do, quick question on, mm -hmm. on abbreviations. Uh, yes. So, because I think the most of the, the recent example is Ernst and Young that changed to EY. Mm -hmm. yeah. As, okay. So everything you see is just now the E and the Y. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sort of in the same, I have an explanation problem every time I mention CRM. Because what does that stand for? And yeah, yeah. It's, it stands for currency risk management, which is what we originally did back in the 90s. But now we do so much more. But this is a household name in the industry now. So uh, I'm thinking of maybe changing it to CTS because we are also called CRM Treasury Systems. Mm -hmm. So then it's, I mean, an abbreviation can still maybe work. Uh, short names. Um, well, what is your sort of yeah. comment? I would say the, that uh, I wouldn't recommend uh, IBM to change their name, no, no. for example. It's a really strong brand. Yeah. If I would talk to a new business, yeah. I would definitely recommend them not to choose an abbreviation. Yeah. It is so difficult yeah. from the legal point of view. And also we, our brains really, we no, don't no, like, no. pardon? We cannot handle that. No, no we no. don't. I mean, three, three digit acronym. It's yeah. really, I, I know so many, I know, I know not, none of them. Because yeah. I, oh, was it that, was it that? Was yeah. It that? So you mix it up, it. you no. don't remember it. No. It's ugly. Mm -hmm. I can go on. Yeah. Don't do it. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's impossible to, I mean, to get it registered yeah. and the domain names. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just forget it. Just forget sort of it. Just confirming my... <laughs> yes. Your sense. Yeah. And when you talk about the, like, currency trading systems, mm. what I said, yeah. That's something so you can use. You didn't use remember that. what I said. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so that you can still use that to clarify, yeah. as the example, to clarify that you are in the health industry yeah, yeah. or you are. So you can use that in your communication, yeah. or as a catchphrase, it would be called maybe or tagline. Yeah. Um, if you have, you could have a more open name or a more um, ab abstract name yeah. that 